Today, Israel is facing a threat unparalleled in world history. Not only is our existence as the state of Israel in danger, but the lives of millions of our citizens, over half of world Jewry, are at the risk of being snuffed out by a genocidal dictator. Iran today is on the verge of completing its nuclear arsenal to accomplish exactly that aim. As arguably the oldest nation on the planet, if there is one thing we have learned from the past, it is that we must never leave our fate in the hands of others. On May 13, 1939, a ship carrying 930 Jewish refugees set sail from Hamburg, Germany, the USS St. Louis. Jews fleeing for their lives, who left everything behind to escape Adolf Hitler. After paying for their visas, they were promised entrance into Cuba. But when the ship arrived, the passengers of the St. Louis were denied asylum. Realizing they had nowhere to go, the ship turned north in hopes that they would find safe haven in the United States and docked off the coast of Florida, desperately hoping for salvation. Not only were they callously denied, but the U.S. sent armed Coast Guard ships, forcing them to keep a distance from the Floridian shores. The leaders of the Jewish community pleaded with President Roosevelt to save these 930 Jews from the hands of Hitler. They were told that America had reached the quota of German immigrants for the year. They pleaded with the American administration. They begged to mortgage the quota for future years. Anything but to send them back to be murdered at the hands of the Nazis. But the Jewish community leaders were told that the regulations on immigration could not be changed. So the Jews on the St. Louis were turned away. The ship, now running low on food and water, turned to Canada, but there too they were denied entrance. Country after country, the Jews had nowhere to run, no one to rely on. The Jews were sent home, home to Hitler. There were no public eruptions by the American people. No one protected the Jews. Human rights activists, the Jewish community, the Christian community, silence. Never again will we be at the mercy of other nations. Israel must always protect the future of the Jewish people. In the first half of 1944, some 435,000 Hungarian Jews were deported to Auschwitz. By that time, the world knew of the systematic genocide going on in Auschwitz, the largest and most infamous concentration camp. Just a few months later, the Allied forces controlled the European skies and with just a few bombs could have obliterated the railroad tracks to Auschwitz, effectively halting the murder of hundreds of thousands of Jews. Jewish communities from around the world called upon the Allied forces to bomb the tracks and destroy the gas chambers. There was no reason not to. Between July and November of that year, more than 2,800 American planes flew right over the railways leading up to Auschwitz. In August and September, American bombers hit the industrial zone of Auschwitz itself, just five miles from the camp's four gas chambers. But the killing installations in Birkenau were never bombed. Technical difficulties, they were told, made carrying such a mission impossible at that time. Every day that went by, every 24 hours, every day the sun set over Auschwitz, we lost 12,000 Jewish souls. We were helpless. No one saved them. No one saved the Jews of Auschwitz. Human rights activists, the Jewish community, the Christian community, silence. Never again will we depend on the help of other countries for our very survival. Israel must always protect the future of the Jewish people. We are reliving the year 1939, but this time is different. The Jewish people of old have been resurrected as the nation of Israel in our homeland. God has shined his face upon Israel once again and we are finally free. Today we're dealing with the president of a country who has publicly called for the death of every Jew and Christian and the destruction of Israel, America and the West. He has built intercontinental ballistic missiles to carry a nuclear warhead and is now moving his nuclear facilities underground. He is a hair's breadth away from a nuclear bomb. We did not return to Israel after 2,000 years to now rely on Washington or the UN. We must never depend on the help of any other country for our survival. Israel must always protect the future of the Jewish people.